Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop, Rising Storm the Starborn by DPH Games. It plays two to four players, takes roughly about 30 minutes to play, and is for ages 14 and up. And in the game Rising Storm, you are playing as a specific faction vying for control. It plays over three rounds and your objective is to place cards down in your column to score as many points as possible each round. You'll also be gaining credits and spending credits, and at the end of those rounds, hopefully you'll have the most so you can gain a bunch of points that way. There's other cards too that will let you capture an opposing players or opposing factions cards, thusly scoring you points at the end of the game in, in addition. Now, this game is all about placement and uh, you're going to start with the first player and you're just going to go uh, from left to right, top to bottom, taking these actions in order and attempting to utilize your actions as best as possible. Manage your credits and function with your civilians and with your military units to hopefully win the round each and every time. If you have the most points at the end of the game, you are the winner in the game Rising Storm the Starborn. Let's talk about how to set up, how to play, and of course my review. To begin the game, give each player a faction board, along with a credit token, and every player will start with five credits. Additionally, there are six starting cards each player will have. Make sure that they get those. If you don't know which the starting cards are, maybe they got mixed up, look on the middle right hand side and check for the symbol that indicates your specific faction. Additionally, go ahead and place your character card or faction card in the middle of the playing field and then based on play order, select the next player and the next player and the next player from left to right. After you've done that, grab the deck of cards associated with the number of players. In a two-player game, there's going to be a two-player deck. With three players, you will then add the three-player deck to the two-player deck, and then with four players, go ahead and add that last deck of cards. If you are playing just a two-player game, just include the five-point victory challenge one cards. However, with a three or four-player game, you can add the marginal victory challenge as well, and that's going to be for second place. Because I'm only playing two players or showing a setup for two players, I'll go ahead and set these guys aside. Afterwards, you'll begin the setup. And setup is really easy. You will take the deck of cards, you will shuffle it, and then you're going to deal out cards for each player. You'll deal out one card in the first row, one card in the second row, and then one card face down in the third row for each player. So you should have three cards for each player at the very beginning of the game. And then you're ready to go. Playing the game is as simple as setting it up. To begin the game, you're just going to simply start with the draft phase. The first player, the person in the top left, is going to be the one that gets to select one of these six cards here. They can select a face up card or they can select a face down card. It doesn't matter which card they take, but face down cards are going to be non-visible for the players and thusly if you take it, it'll be a surprise to you and your opponents when you choose to play them. So one card and then one card. And you'll simply rinse and repeat. You can take any any card you want in the draft period, just so long as that each player is going to receive three cards. With a three or four player game, you just simply add their faction card and those three extra cards, the two face up and the two face down. And so you should have an extra three cards in addition to your first starting six cards. After that is done, the playing phase will begin. And just like that, in playing order, players are going to select a card from their hand and they can choose to play it face up. So they'll play a card just like this, and then they can do whatever it says. The next player is going to play another card face up and do whatever it says. In addition to playing a card and gaining its ability, there are certain things on the card that you'll need to be aware of. The first thing is going to be the value of the card. This is how many points it's worth. And remember, you're always checking from starting order. So you'll go from the top left, left to right, and then top to bottom. And it's very important that you have the highest score at the end of the round as close to the top as possible. This player has a one power unit. Underneath the power is a cost. So this is gonna say zero credits. So it's a free card to play. So when playing the sapper here, it says that I can steal up to two credits from the player that won this challenge. It's a great card to play if you do not think you're going to win. The Diplomat, on the other hand, is going to cost zero credits as well and be worth one power. And it says that military cards have a power of zero. Well, what's interesting about military cards is they are in red and military cards typically can be combined. Only two cards can be combined, but when you combine them, you'll score their power in addition to each other. So a two and a two, you get four power, which can easily win you the game. Sadly, with the Diplomat though, it's gonna be difficult to do that. After the card's been played up for the first row, and you'll move on to the next, and you'll simply once again choose a card and place it down. 
and always rinse and repeat. Check to see if it has a certain number of power and check to see if there's a cost. Play a face down card um, under this card and you'll reveal it at the end of the challenge. So I would select a card from my hand and I would place it face down. And then the next player is gonna get to go. And let's go ahead and show you what happens with uh, some of the cards for credits. Like the merchant. The merchant is going to have one power and it's going to give you two credits. So you actually go up on the tracker here because some of them will give you credits. Additionally, you'll get to draw a card from the storm deck. Next play is going to go. And in this case, let's show you what happens when you have to pay for something. How about a special ops? You may capture an enemy civilian card. It's going to have one power and it's going to cost you one credit. So you'll actually go down on the track. But with these two combined right now, you're going to have a power of two. But sadly, the diplomat is in play. Thusly, they're going to be worth zero. However, you can still capture a, an, an enemy civilian card. Civilians are in blue and you can capture this diplomat. Captured cards will go onto your player board and at the end of the last round of the game, you will score points based on the capture power or capture value at the bottom right hand side. The next play is going to be resolved. Once again, they will select a card from their hand. They will play one down. Well, look, we got the Statesman there. Uh, that's going to give you plus one as far as credits go. And while in play, other civilian cards in this column have plus two power, which is very, very useful. Now the three face cards have been played face up. So you're gonna have one more play for each player and you'll be placing cards face down. You'll place a card face down for this player and then somebody's going to play a card face down for this player. And then you're going to reveal all at once. You'll flip these guys over and you will do their order of operations. You'll start from left and you'll go to right. The, uh, the sapper is gonna cost zero, steal up to two credits from the player that won this challenge. The emissary, other civilian cards in this column may not be captured. So just in case somebody wanted to try and capture, they can't do that now. Then you'll go from top to bottom, left to right, and resolve anything that might be in play. So like a secret agent, this card will be revealed and you'll check to see what it does. Oh, in this case, I'm gonna gain one credit and cards in this column cost one credit fewer to play. Probably not a great card to play face down, but that's just simply what it does. And you'll just go ahead and check. After that, you're gonna see who won. You'll see who has the highest power. He's got a three here. And we have a three here, a one and a two. Uh, also remember that these two are going to be an increase in value for military, which is two points. And it's based on order of operations as to who wins the game. So the winner here would be the oligarch, the starborn 142nd, they would score five points. After you score, you'll check to see if any other abilities exist, like the sappers. There's two of them here, so that this player thought that the sway was going to win. Sadly, they won, so they do not get to steal four credits from the winning challenger, or the winning player. After that happens, all of these cards are going to be discarded. When these cards are discarded, you'll start the next round. And once again, deal out cards for people to be able to draft. So you'll rinse and repeat, placing these cards face up like this, and then two cards face down, and proceeding. When the last round has been played, thusly all three challenge cards have been won, you will check to see who has the most points. You will check to see how many captures you have and how many points they're worth in total, along with how many credits you have, and you'll look to the right-hand side to see how many credits they are, it is worth. And then additionally, they're going to add any challenge one cards that you have. Whoever has the most points is the winner of the game and there's three minor tiebreakers. And that's basically how you play the Rising Storm. Okay, so let's get this out of the way. I reviewed a few DPH games and this one by far is my favorite. I really, really love the card placement, the control, the different unique aspects that involve choosing cards that are face down and playing cards that are face down, saving cards for later, and then utilizing cards to remove enemy cards or capture enemy cards. Some of them will just get discarded. Some of them you can take and steal their point value. It'll change the flow of the game with just one simple placement. With more players becomes more fun. There's more interactions and more things that will trigger throughout the rounds. But all in all, it's a very simple game. It's very straightforward and you understand how it functions. You just look top to bottom, left to right, top to bottom, and you go throughout the cards and you play them in that order as well. And when somebody wins a round, that player will move to the front. They receive less value for being having to play first because other players will know what they're playing. But still, there are cards that will allow you, like the spy and whatnot, to place cards under them and hide your objective until the very end of the game. You can even place a spy face down. Thus, when they all get revealed, the spy will slide another card face down and you can flip it up. So you're going to be able to actually have control over some things that you might not have control in.
The fact that each of the different player decks includes more and more cards gives you more control about knowing what cards are available and who might have what cards, and thusly deducing when players are going to play certain types of victory point cards. Not only that, but you don't have to win a round and score these five points in order to win a round. You can simply utilize your cards to score you more credits that you can use either later or to score you victory points at the end of the game. So for instance, if you have 16, 17, or 18 points, that is worth 18 victory points, which is more points than all three challenges won. And that is one way that you can score. So you can focus on simply getting credits and stealing and or capturing units. And that could be all you need to do to win the victory. You don't actually have to worry about the power. Or maybe you want to go all out power in capture mode. So you're capturing people's units, you're trying to increase your military might, and preparing to use those cards to remove cards like the Diplomat, who is going to say military cards have a power of zero, that kind of thing. Can, it, it can like kind of reduce the likelihood of you failing by, by knowing what you're going to play uh, in upcoming rounds and preparing for people to play certain cards. Cards are better in certain slots at certain times, and as you play the game, you will get better at understanding that. But overall, the game is very simple to understand as you start, and you'll make bad choices, and when you make those choices, you will learn from them very quickly. It's a light game. This game is 30 minutes, that is correct. It could even be a little shorter, depending on the number of players you're playing with. Three to four to, uh, one, two, three, uh, two, three, four, it doesn't matter how many players you play. The game is still pretty straightforward. It's not gonna add a huge amount of extra time in, invested into the game, and it's really easy to sit down and play. Uh, the artwork is great. I like the artwork. I love the cards. The cards are very easy to understand. This is the power. This is how much it costs. Here's what happens when you get captured. And of course, your ability. And that's all you need to really know other than just, is it a military or a civilian card? Um, the one thing they could do a little better, I suppose, maybe introduce, explain how these guys, you can only have two of them. I think it's explained just in the back of the rule book and in their rules video. But maybe it just says like, I don't know exactly what it would say, only two or so, something on that to kind of just illustrate that point. It's not super confusing after you just know the rule, it's really simple, but it can be a little bit confusing as to learning the game. This overall is an excellent game. It's a lot of fun, it's very straightforward, it's very streamlined, and you'll want to play again after you've played it, and as you understand it, you will get better at it. The artwork, like I said, is solid. Uh, this is a prototype, so everything you see here is prototype quality. These boards are going to be actual boards, etc., etc. But the game is a heck of a lot of fun. As far as negatives go, I mean, it's going to be a lighter version, a lighter, lighter card game, something that's pretty straightforward and... Um, I don't really have a whole lot of negatives, actually. It's just one of those things where you're either going to like this game, you're going to be liking card placement, hidden card placement, revealing and scoring points, or it might not be for you. But it is for me. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for The Rising Storm, The Starborn. If you're interested in picking up this game, there is a link down below which will take you to the Kickstarter. You can also check out our star videos here. I like, subscribe, and comment. Hit that bell notification button. If you haven't subscribed and this is at least your second video, please consider subscribing. It greatly helps the channel out and it makes us continue to want to do the work here. If I have earned your subscription, push the button. Uh, we have a live stream every Wednesday on Whatnot where we sell board games. Um, usually a lot of used games, uh, older, older games, and some newer ones as well. And you can join us there. You can also go ahead and join us on our regular live streams where I'm actually going to want to play this live on stream to show people how fun this game is. And that is on 6.30pm uh, 6 PST on Sundays on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube. You can't miss us if you, find, if you go to our channels at 6.30. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you. And as always, I look forward to defeating your factions and conquering the galaxy without you next time.